Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Isaiah 58, 61. He's telling the nation Israel, I am the way, the truth, and the light. There's no other way. There's been no other way. Of all the gods and all the goddesses and all the shrines and all the altars we read about in Isaiah, Jeremiah. God says, you better come to me. And rend your heart. And not your garments. The Lord seeketh for what's inside, not outside. Anybody can rend their garment. They can rend their garment because everybody else is rending their garment. Somebody can tithe just because everybody else is tithing. You can do it because of peer pressure. God says, I want it from your heart. And turn unto the Lord your God. Those are the definitions of repenting. Turning to God. You say somebody trusts Christ as their Savior. Did they turn to God? Do they have works to show that they have turned to God or just said a prayer? It's a big difference. It's an eternal difference. Exodus 34, 7 and Psalms 51, 17. For he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger. You'll say, what about this seven-year tribulation period? It's not God's fault. Nowhere is Jacob's trouble God's fault. Matter of fact, he's been warning them. Book after book, after page after page, he's been telling them. You need to get right. And the fact is that there's going to be a remnant of Jews, how little they are. Isn't that just graceful enough? If God were right now, and he's not going to, but if he were right now, put up to Satan and say, you know what? I'm done with it. It's it. You know how quick it would be to eliminate them Jews totally? Jacob's trouble is not God's fault. It's Jacob's fault. The children of Israel's fall, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Evil is what happens when you sin. God is sorry he has to bring the great tribulation. You know, God, it says in Hebrews that God spanks his children as a father does his child. And God says, you know, I don't like that. I don't take pleasure in doing that. But it has to be done. And if Israel will repent, God will turn from the judgment. Deuteronomy 32, 36. So see, you've got to read the entire Bible. Deuteronomy wasn't just for the time of Moses and, you know, the Old Testament Jews. What do you do with Deuteronomy when you get, what do you call the period, the tribulation period, Jews? Hmm? He says, I'll, I, I will seven times more for your sins, seven times more for your sins. How many vials is there? How many seals are there? How many trumpets are there? How many woes are there? You've got to stop looking at it as the Old Testament as Old Testament. Yes, it's historical. But the Bible is historic, it's doctrinal, and it's prophetic. There are things in this Bible that's going to happen again. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and drink offering unto the Lord your God? talking to the people of Israel 
Notice it doesn't say believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation by works. you got to do something. Blow the trumpet in Zion. We started the chapter with, with this. Sanctify a fast. We started the chapter with this. Call a solemn assembly. Get together. And I believe we read about that something in uh, Hosea. Somewhere. Right in, the, right in the tribulation period, we read somewhere where they're gathering together. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Set them apart. For God. Assemble the elders. Get the old people. Gather the children. Get the young people. And those that suck the breasts. Little, little ones. Who can't walk. Can't feed themselves. Let the bridegroom go forth from his chamber. Get out. And the bride out of her closet. It's not a time for your marriage. It's not a time for about you. It's about the nation getting right. Put away that wedding. Put away that marriage. Let's get right. Let's put everything off to the side. Let's park the boat. And get back to God. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. That's future. That's a future temple. It's going to have a porch. It's going to have an altar. I believe that just as much as I believe the Lord's going to rapture me out of here one day, dead or alive. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy thy thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Ooh. Wait a minute, weren't the Jews that, that told Jesus Christ, told uh, Pilate, we have no king but Caesar? They didn't know the Bible too well, did they? They forgot what the law said. You weren't to have a Gentile here. You were to have a, a king of your own family, your own flesh and blood. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. This is my land. This is your land. Really? Only America would sing a stupid song like that. If it's really your land, don't pay your mortgage. See who gets it. Build that house without the permits and find out who owns it. You let these group of people that are now rising up in America, you wait today, start wanting things of yours. They just told a politician, you're going to let us speak our microphone? Or you just shut up. You know what happened? They let them speak. And pity his people. The Jews. The land of Israel. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people. Not America. Some people think America is God's people. You know, at one point in time, the early settlers of America would call Massachusetts the new hope, the new Israel. Really? I saw how you brought in your kingdom. You 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 burned people supposedly be witches. You you took their property. You took their lands. You took their money to support one church. You weren't no different from the mother church over back in England. You weren't more different than the church that was in Europe. That's bringing in the kingdom without God. I will send you corn. Then the caterpillars. The canker worms, the locusts, and the palmer worm, didn't they already eat it? Wasn't there a, just a great famine in the land? God will bring food to the Jews. And wine, grapes. And not just grapes, grapes will be able to be turned to wine. And oil, olives. 
and ye shall be satisfied. You, you're going to get a filling. You're going to get full therewith. You're going to be satisfied with the corn, the wine, and the oil from God. And you're going to know it this time it's from God. And you're going to give God the glory. Now be the best thing you can do. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. You take the world wide web. And you were just put some kind of thing some kind of generic thing jewish jokes you know how many hits you would hit you know how many books you could probably find you know how many jokes you could probably find on, on, on about jewish people on the internet and god said one day i'm going to take all those jokes away i'm going to take all those parables about you guys away I'm going to take all those insults about you guys away. Jeremiah 33, 3 through 18. I mean, it's commonly reported among the Jews is how do they make wire over in, in Israel? Easy, throw, throw a penny between two Jews and you got a copper wire. Those jokes are a dime a dozen. One day, They'll be lifted up a people strong, a people of God, a people, a nation by the Lord God, beloved of God. Like, you know, they think we're fools, Christians. They think we're dope, think we're idiots. One day we're going to just be ahead of all. I don't know how, I don't know how, if we'll be equal with Israel or under or above Israel. But as much as Israel is a taunt and a, and a, and a by word, and so is the church. One day we'll be lifted up above all. And we'll get the last word as sinners are cast into the lake of fire. It burns forever. But I will remove far off from you, the Jew, the northern army. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate, Ezekiel 39, with his face toward the east sea, the Dead Sea, and his hinder part, rear end, rearward, toward the utmost sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savior shall come up. Because he has done great things. Revelation 19, 18 to 21. He's going to make a stink. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. What's the great thing that the Lord's going to do in the land? To relieve the land. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to sit king of kings and lord of lords. The second Adam is going to sit in the garden of Jerusalem and reign, removing the curse off everything but the snake. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. Okay, preaching to animals. Don't be afraid. You know why animals attack? Fear. You know one thing, if you've got a dog that's coming snarling up to you, you know what you don't show that dog? Fear. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. And he's talking to the beast. Hey, you know what they're fearing? I'm hungry. I'm starving to death. Them canker worm, the locust. The Palmer and, and I forget the other guy there. They've eaten everything. There's nothing left for us. And God speaks to the land and says, hey, just relax. He speaks to the animals. Be calm. There's going to be animals in the millennium. That's What else are they going to offer? Noah had to take seven of the clean animals or else we wouldn't have no more sheep. Wouldn't have any more barbecue pig. That was before the law. 
could have steak if Noah only brought two cattle on the boat. He had to bring seven. Then he offered offering to God. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. It's not Utah. You know, I can name any place I want to name, but I can call myself anything I want to call myself. But Zion is where God's land is. Jewish. Oh, that's right. Uh, a bunch of people had Jewish names of a name in America. All that outfit was to march to Zion was so we could have multiple wives and bring in the kingdom. Just another Roman Catholic, another uh, Church of England, another, uh, uh, I can't think of the church's name in America that did it. That's all they did. They just bring in the kingdom of God without God and with weapons. They didn't read that our warfare is not a weapons of carnal, it's weapons of spirit. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. The weatherman says that these big arrows and this big L that I never see in the sky and this big H that's over there. He says all that brings the rain. Liar. Um, no, come on, let, 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 let's get into this. Let's get into Christian inoccupations. We've got a Christian running for the White House. Let's take a Christian weatherman. Well, the front here is going to bring in the, the vast of the east and all that. It's going to bring rains and stuff. The Bible just said God. Now, why don't you just get up on that weather map and say, God is going to bring these winds this way, and what God has ordained by the certain paths of the wind will probably bring rain if we pray hard enough as we need it. That guy wouldn't even be able to finish the weather report before itsy bitsy blousy wowsy newswoman at her desk would be recording now the news of poor little children who need to be fed. Oh, that guy's been thrown out the door in a dumpster. The Bible says God gives the rain. The Bible says through Jesus Christ, he says that God giveth the rain upon the just and the unjust. How's that? Wouldn't it be great if, if we get to heaven and we have a science book burning? All right, today, Christians, bride, we're going to take the chapter of science books on weatherology. We're going to sum it up in one word. Well, everyone open their Bibles to Joel chapter 2 and read that he has given you the former rain monitor. Okay, everybody understand where the rain came from? All right, let's throw these books out into the fire. Cast them off in the lake of fire. Yes, Solomon says that there is evaporation that goes up and comes out, you know, the cycle. But where does that come from? God. That was designed by God. God is into recycling. He reuses the rain. He will cause to come down from for you the, late, the rain and the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. What's so prevalent about that statement? Let me give you a clue. Elijah. There's been no rain three and a half years in the tribulation period. So this rain that God's going to give at the end of the tribulation period, it's going to be a blessing. And notice how he tells you which month it's going to be in. Adar. Now, can we break our calendar upon that? Maybe God will make, when they're, when they're taken out of the land by Jesus Christ like Moses did, maybe that will be the first of first for Israel again. And we'll just start the calendar over. I don't know, maybe. Or maybe it will be that month. I don't know. I'm not going to limit God on calendars. 
The floor shall be full of wheat. Did you read Joel chapter 1? The locusts are sitting up, up against the trees burping. With little napkins wiping their face. And that was good. Watching the canker worms come in and devour what was left. Now the floor shall be full of wheat and fat shall overflow with wine and oil. You know, there's another passage, another book in the Bible, uh, they say minor prophets, that speaks about they're going to plant fruits and right then and there you're going to be able to pick those fruits. Now let me stick my neck out here. You're coming out of the tribulation period. There's been no rain. Elijah is calling for droughts. Moses is calling for blood, whatever is left over of the water. There are no crops, Joel chapter 1. In order to survive the needs of his people, you're going to have to look at some kind of miraculous rain that produces crops just like that. You want to talk about a miracle grow? How about you're looking at the field, you turn around, and look at you know, you look at your child, see what he's doing, you turn back, and that field is just white on the wheat. Is that the correct part? Is that the correct scripture? White on the harvest? Well, wait a minute, it wasn't a field there just a minute ago. I can do all things, God says. Is anything too hard for me? Didn't he feed them with, with men in the wilderness? That's, that's a possibility that these crops are going to point there they are. The floor shall be full. After we just read and studied Joel chapter 1. You know how long it takes grapes to grow naturally? And God has to control those bugs in Joel chapter 1. They'll be like, hey, hey, look at this. They're back. Oh, oh man. It's a Chinese meal. We just had a thing that's back. Let's go get some more. No. It's going to be for the people of Israel. Watch. You think I'm full of it. Watch. Verse 24. The floor shall be full of wheat. That's the threshing floor. It's already been harvested. It's not growing. It's already been picked. You know how Israel found the land when they came into it? The houses were built. The gardens were there. The, the wells were digged. The house had furniture. That's one of my first messages I ever preached. When the Israelites came into the land, it was already there prepared by God. Didn't it say the day that... that I'm probably not going to finish this chapter tonight. When... Joshua brought the children into Israel that they ate of the old. They walked in, they walked in the land. And here's a barn. They opened up. Ah, and no more manna. It was already prepared. God had the heathen plant and do the Walmart shopping and get the curtains and get the garden and get the pets and get the extra sheet so they can die in, in Israel. Go, I'll take that house. Caleb walks in, in his land at 85 years old. That's the house I wanted. Get your butt out. And he got the springs and neither springs. And he gave them to his daughter. What happened to Israel is going to happen again. They're going to walk in the land. And there it is all prepared. But not by the heathen, but by God. Without the curse. Now, I don't know how much we're going to eat as Christians as the bride of Christ in the, in the millennium. Wait, can you imagine what the food's going to taste like then? No artificial sweeteners, no chemical, pure, undefiled, sinless, uncursed fruit. Let me add the tomatoes. Let me add them grapes. Remember what the grapes were in numbers? When they weren't allowed to go in for 40 years? They carried one cluster among two men. Grapes the size of bowling balls? Me. You imagine what kind of wine you're going to get out of that? One grape will probably fill a gallon. Now, we're not done. I love this book. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Where'd you read that? The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm word, palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. 
In chapter 1, verse 4, the famine ends, and God says, I used, uh, I used an army. Sir Locust, Admiral Captain uh, Caker Worm, General Caterpillar, and Lieutenant Palmer Worms. Yes, sir. What do you want us to do? Go in there and eat. <laughs> hey, all right. Woo -wee. Come and dine, the master call it. Come and dine, Bert. That was a theme song with all those bugs. And you know what God said? Everything that they devoured, what we studied in Joel chapter 1, God said, I'll give it right back. What? How long would it take to get that all back? It has to be miraculous. It has to be. These people are starving. There's no water. There's no food. Joel chapter 1. Think they're going to wait around for six or seven months? They'll be dead. God had the, oops, didn't plan that one. God's not like that. And ye shall know. Oh, wait a minute, I skipped. And verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty. So what's the candy? Good in plenty. Take it out of the Bible. And be satisfied. And praise the name of China. No. Praise the name of the America. No. Not Kellogg's. Praise the name of the Lord your God. And what's the Bible say? In everything you do or deed, give thanks unto God. It said, Paul says to him, talking about the law, talking about what you can do. If you can bow your head before that bacon and thank the Lord, enjoy. You know, God just told them there, you're going to have this food and you're going to thank me. How's that for a nation rebuilt, a nation dedicated to God? Do you think they're doing that today with their heart? That have dwelt wondrously. What could that wondrously else be besides the miracle food? The miracle bro. Where did they get that name from? Listen, I've used miracle bro. It doesn't make it any faster. But God does. And dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. What do you think they're going to be when they find the Lord Jesus Christ coming? Ashamed. And ye shall know. And I know. Yes, I know. That I am. Look at that. God. Yes, Moses. What did the children of Israel ask what your name is? I am that I am. Didn't he just say they shall praise the name of the Lord your God? And then he said, next verse, I am. Did you get that? Do you know what Jesus kept saying in John in the Gospel of John? I am. I am. I am. Did you get the capital L? The capital O, the capital R, the capital D, your God. How can you not miss the relationship between God and Jesus Christ? Unless you change your Bible. My people shall never be ashamed. Ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. How is he going to be in the midst of Israel? Sitting on the throne of David. Literal. Sitting in the midst of it. When they were in the wilderness. And coming out of Egypt. He was a cloud by day. And a pillar of fire at night. In the midst of the congregation. Now he'll be manifested. As the Messiah. Sitting in the land. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now if God is not Jesus. And Jesus is not God. Again. That I am the I am again the Lord your God and none else. Paul said there's another Jesus, there's another gospel, there's another spirit, and my people shall never be ashamed. Ezekiel 
29, verse 38. And it shall come to pass afterward, after everything we've just spoken, that I will pour out my spirit, God's spirit, upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Tell what's going to happen. And this is not the magic spoons and the magic sky, the magic tea leaves. This will be coming from God. It's time to head to Jerusalem. It's time to praise God. It's time to bring the Lamb. It's time. And your old men shall dream dreams. Look at that. That's coming back. What's the imitation by Satan? Go to your bookstore and buy a book of dreams. That's not today. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. And in those days will I pour out my spirit. Ezekiel 36, 25 to 38. Upon the servants of the Jews. Not just the Jews. Not just the elders. Not just the priests. But even the ones that weigh on them. Oh. There are servants and handmaids in the millennium. You got that one, right? The coming of Jesus to free the slaves from Southern America doesn't eliminate servitude and handmaidism. Sorry. I will show wonders in the heavens. Three of them. S. And in the earth. Blood, how many years has there been blood shed since Cain slew Abel? I'm talking about murdering, not accidental. I mean, literally, you went out, to, you, you hated him, and you, you attended to kill him. Hmm, how much? And the Bible says if you didn't apply capital punishment to that person, the death penalty, the land speaks out. How much do you think this earth cries out when religions have killed people in the name of God? So God says, I'll bring it right back to you. Be not deceived. God's not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also weep. And fire. Boy, that fire keeps showing up in Joel. And pillars of smoke. Revelation 14 20. When that pit opens up, oh boy, it, it, I thought, I think it says it, it's, it's a thick smoke, and out comes these weird creatures. The sun shall be turned into darkness. Well, no more worshiping Baal and getting yourself a tan. No more spring break. No more going down to, the, to Daytona Beach or Virginia Beach. It won't be for lovers no more. You won't be able to find your way. And the moon into, bl into blood. Explain that. I have no idea. I have no idea. But there's going to be blood on the earth and blood on the moon. I don't know everything. Acts 2.30, Revelation 6.12. The sun will be dark and the moon will be into blood before the great and wonderful day of the Lord to come. It's not what it says. Before the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, it goes pitch black. The lights go out. John chapter 3. And it shall come to pass. That whosoever, Romans 10, 13, shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. It's not saved. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For in Mount Zion... And in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. It's 
Jewish. Jewish deliverance. Jewish, de uh, yeah, delivered. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. In that great time of the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ, there are going to be Jewish people reaching out to God and saying, here we are. And at that point, at that repentance, God will turn to the Son, go get my bride. Take your bride, mount up, go. And anybody that stands in your way, son, you got a flame for all. Use it. Show no mercy. Show no pity. You ain't that baby anymore. You ain't that lamb no more. You are a lion. Church, daughter-in-law, you are my son's bride. You just follow along. You know, as we talked about the other night, maybe there's a maybe there's a Rahab that needs to be brought out. Maybe. I could be wrong about that. And Joel tells you what's going to happen towards the end and the end of the Great Tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble. And it's not a good time. It's not the best time to see Jesus Christ. And Joel taxed many religions 